Hey everyone, in this Spring Boot interview question series, I am covering real, challenging and tricky questions. So let's get started. Can we create a non-web application in Spring Boot? Yes, we can make a non-web application with Spring Boot. Spring Boot is not just for web projects. We can use it for other types like running scripts or processing data. If we don't add web parts to our project, it won't start a web server. Instead, we can use a feature in Spring Boot to run our code right after the program starts. This way, Spring Boot helps us build many different types of applications, not just websites. Now let's move to the different question. What does Spring Boot application annotation do internally? So Spring Boot application annotation is like a shortcut that combines three other annotations. First, it uses configuration, telling Spring that this class has configurations and beans that Spring should manage. Then it uses enable auto configuration, which allows Spring Boot to automatically set up the application based on the libraries on the class path. Lastly, it includes component scan, which tells Spring to look for other components, configuration and services in the current package, allowing it to find and register them. Now let's move to the different question. How does Spring Boot supports internationalization? Spring Boot supports internationalization by showing our applications text in different languages by using properties file. We put these files in a folder named source main resources. Each file has a name like message underscore xx in properties file. Where access stands for language code. Spring Boot uses these files to pick the right language based on the user settings. We can set rules on how to choose the user's language with something called local resolver. This way our application can speak to users in their language, making it more user friendly for people from different parts of the world. Now let's move to the different question. What is Spring Boot DevTools used for? Spring Boot DevTools is a tool that makes developing application faster and easier. It automatically restarts our application when we change code so we can see updates immediately without restarting manually. It also refreshes our web browser automatically if we change things like HTML files. DevTools also provides shortcuts for common tasks and helps with fixing problems by allowing remote debugging. Basically, it's like having a helpful assistant that speeds up our work by taking care of repeated tasks and letting us focus on writing and improving our code. Now let's move to the different question. How can you mock external services in a Spring Boot test? In a Spring Boot test, we can mock external services using the mock bin annotation. This annotation lets us create a mock version of an external service or repository inside our test environment. When we use mock bean, Spring Boot replaces the actual bean with the mock in the application context. Then we can define how this mock should behave using mocking frameworks like Mockito, specifying what data to return when certain methods are called. This approach is super helpful for testing our application's logic without actually calling external services, making our tests faster and more reliable since they don't depend on the external systems being available or behaving consistently. Now let's move to the different question. How do you mock microservices during testing? To mock microservices during test, I use tool like Wiremock or Mockito to pretend I am talking to real services. With these tools, I set up a fake responses to our request. So if my app asks for something from other service, the tool steps in and give back what I told it to just like if the real service had answered. This method is great for testing how our app works with other services without needing those services to be actually running, making our test quicker and more reliable. Now let's move to the different question. Explain the process of creating a Docker image for a Spring Boot application. To make a Docker image for a Spring Boot application, we start by writing a Docker file. This file tells Docker how to build our app's image. We mention which Java version to use add our app's jar file and specify how to run our app. After writing the docker file, we run a command docker like this in the terminal. This command tells docker to create the image with everything our app needs to run. By doing this, we can easily run our Spring Boot application anywhere docker is available making our apps more portable and easy to deploy. Now let's move to the different question. Discuss the configuration of Spring Boot security to address common security concerns. To make my Spring Boot application secure, I would set up a few things with Spring security. First, I would make sure users are who they say they are by setting up a login system. This could be a simple username and password form or using accounts from other services. 
Next, I would control what parts of our application each user can access based on their roles. I would also switch on HTTPS to keep data safe while it's being sent over the internet. Spring security helps stop common web attacks like CSRF by default. So I would make sure that's turned on. Plus, I would manage user sessions carefully to avoid anyone hijacking them. And I would store passwords securely by using strong hashing. This way, I'm covering the basics to keep the app and its users safe. Now let's move to the different questions. Discuss how would you secure a Spring Boot application using JSON Web Token. To use a JSON Web application for securing a Spring Boot application, I would set it up so that when users log in, they get a JWT. This token has its detail and permissions. For every action the users want to do afterward, the app checks this token to see if they are allowed. I would use a special security checks in Spring Boot to grab and check the JWT on each request making sure it's a valid this way the app doesn't have to keep asking the database who the user is making things faster and safer especially for apps that have a lot of users or need to be very secure now let's move to the different question how can a spring boot application be made more resilient to failures especially in microservices architecture to make spring boot apps stronger against failures especially when using many services together we can use tools and techniques like circuit breakers and retries with libraries like resilience 4j a circuit breaker stops calls to a service that doesn't working right helping prevent bigger problems retry logic tries the call again in case it fails for a minor reason also setting up timeouts helps avoid waiting too long for something that might not work plus keeping an eye on the system with good logging and monitoring let's spot and fix issues first this approach keeps the app running smoothly even when some parts have trouble. Now let's move to the different question. Explain the conversion of business logic into serverless functions with Spring Cloud function. To make serverless function with Spring Cloud function, we can write our business task as simple Java functions. These are then set up to work as serverless functions, which means they can run on cloud platforms without us having to manage a server. This setup lets our code automatically adjust to more or fewer requests saving money and making maintenance easier. Basically, we focus on the code and Spring Cloud functions handles the rest, making it ready for the cloud. Now let's move to the different question. How can Spring Cloud Gateway be configured for routing, security and monitoring? For routing, we define routes in the application properties or through Java config, specifying paths and destination for incoming requests. For security, we integrate Spring Security to add authentication, authorization and protection against common threats. To enable monitoring, we use Spring Actuator which provides built-in endpoints for monitoring and managing the gateway. This setup allows us to control how requests are handled, secure the gateway and keep an eye on its performance and health all within the Spring ecosystem. Now let's move to the different question. How would you manage and monitor asynchronous tasks in a Spring Boot application, ensuring that you can track task progress and handle failures? I would integrate with a messaging system like RabbitMQ or Apache Kafka. First, I would add the necessary dependencies in my POMXML file or Gradle file. Then I would configure the connection to the message broker in my properties or YAML file, specifying details like the host, port or credentials. Next, I would use Spring's enable messaging annotation to enable messaging capabilities and create a bean annotation to define the queue, exchange and binding. To send messages, I would auto wire the Kafka template and use its send or convert and send method, passing the message and destination. Now let's move to the different question. Your application needs to process notifications asynchronously using a message queue. Explain how you would set up the integration and send messages from your Spring Boot application. To manage and monitor asynchronous tasks in a Spring Boot application, I would use the async annotation to run tasks in the background and completable future to track their progress and handling results or failures. For thread management, I would configure a thread pool task executor to customize thread settings. To monitor these tasks, I would integrate a Spring Boot Actuator, which provides insights into application health and metrics, including thread pool usage. This combination allows me to efficiently run tasks asynchronously, monitor their execution, and ensure proper error handling, keeping the app responsive and reliable. Moving to the next question, you need to secure a Spring Boot application to ensure that only authenticated users can access certain endpoints. Describe how you would configure Spring Security to set up a basic form-based authentication. First, I would start by adding the Spring Security dependency to my project. I would configure a Web Security Configurer Adapter to customize security settings. In this configuration, I would use 
the HTTP dot authorized request method to specify which endpoints require authentication. I would enable form based authentication by using HTTP dot form login method which automatically provides a login form. Additionally, I would configure users and their roles in the configure method either in memory or through a database.